Hi right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful. It is a summer day. It is a Tuesday afternoon. That would be Tuesday, July 12th, 2022. And I noticed a couple of alert listeners have sent me a various uh, and sundry versions of this story. Uh, so I guess it is now being officially reported in the mainstream media. We're going to read two articles today, uh, and you can draw your own dots, and then I'm sure I will come back with some commentary. Uh, as if I need to add any comments to the story. Uh, anyway, let's start out with from Barron's. Barron's, you know, that obviously that pro-business, generally right-wing rag. Barron's, uh, although they're just running this from the French news service. All right. World population to hit 8 billion this year, according to the United Nations. Now, of course, nobody knows how many people are on the planet. There's probably already 8 billion, but if you want to play the game, I guess officially we hit the Super 8 on November 15th. There you go. That's how well they have this. Narrowed down, the world's population is expected to reach 8 billion on November 15th. Yes, the UN forecast on Monday in a report that also said India will surpass China as the most populous country on Earth next year in 2023. That overall population milestone. Okay, now, getting ready to get a quote from this dude, uh, you know, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who is always, you know, holding up these dire uh, reports from the UN, talking all about how everybody's starving. Uh, that emissions are going through the roof, that we're all doomed. Uh, the guy is, uh, the guy is, you know, a big a doomer as I am, uh, whoever this jackass is. Uh, and so now he gets a report that 8 billion people are officially going to be crowded onto this planet. And what does he do? He says it's a reason for celebration. And, and uh, more than anything, you know, th this dude, Antonio Guterres, all the reasons why uh, that this planet is doomed because there's too goddamn many people on it. And then he gets the official report that there's too goddamn many people on the planet and it's something to celebrate. Yes. That overall population milestone, quote, is a, this is on Teddy, quote, is a reminder of our shared responsibility to care for our planet. Yes, uh, the, the responsibility to keep our pecker in our pants. Uh, Jesus. Uh... All right, having 8 billion people officially on a planet is a reminder of our shared responsibility to care for our planet and a moment to reflect on where we still fall short of our commitments to one another. Yes, of course, if he's talking about every other earthling we share the planet with, you know, our commitment to them, okay, that, that is to turn the 8 billion uh, around in the other direction radically. All right, here we go. You hear it right here from the head of the United Nations. 
the old Doomer himself. This is an occasion to celebrate. There you go. Let's all celebrate seeing how many people we can cram onto the planet since obviously, according to the United Nations and their sustainable development goals and everything else, the number one highest and best use of a planet is to see how many humans we can stuff onto it and sell them wind turbines and solar panels. This is an occasion to celebrate our diversity. We're gonna come back and talk about celebrating our diversity when we uh, get to the second report from the United Nations here in a minute. So uh, this is an occasion to celebrate our diversity, recognize our common humanity, and marvel, marvel at advancements in health that have extended lifespans and dramatically reduced maternal and child mortality rates, close quote. There you go. How about, uh, well, well, again, as we're going to talk about uh, when we get to the second story, just in case Antonio is not aware of this, uh, we're going to be talking about some other clueless moron from the UN in the second story. All right, there is one way, one way to, to completely reduce child mortality to zero. One way, one way only to reduce on this planet child mortality rates to zero and that is to stop breeding. A child who is never born can never starve to death or whatever uh, that we're getting ready to talk about. If Antonio Guterres ha had any interest in reducing the child mortality rate, he would be advocating having fewer children to die. Let's see, the forecast by the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs said the world's population is growing at its slowest pace since 1950. So here, here you go again. This is where all of the, the Alex Jones, Elon Musk crowd will take this bullshit statistic, all right, that a, a, that a planet of 8 billion people is growing at a slower rate than when the planet had 2 billion people on it. All right, a hell of a lot more uh, people are being born on this planet every year than in 1950. A shitload of people, uh, more babies are being born on this planet in the year 2022 than in 1950 because there's four times as many people on the planet. You know, th th this is real rocket science. So, so Elon Musk, how many is Elon now that he, uh, I, I guess he, uh, we had that little oops with those twins, you know, he knocked up uh, that uh, chick who works for him, had twins. I've heard the guy might be up to 12 children. And uh, he made some joke that he was doing his part or something. Uh shining a light on the biggest threat to civilization, which is too few people on the planet, I think he said. So Antonio Guterres and, uh, and Elon Musk both have something to celebrate, uh, at least they will on November 15th. Uh, okay, so Growing at its slowest pace since 1950, which means this, according to the UN, and, and, and again, guys, uh, I, I know 
the the ALTers uh, always have a knee slap over this. The global population should hit eight and a half billion in 2030, 9.7 billion in 2050, peaking at around 10.4 billion people in the 2080s before steadying at that level until 2100. Yeah, we shall see. Uh, we shall see whether uh, the world population will peak at 10.4 billion or not. Uh, anyway, while a net drop in birth rates is being observed in several developing countries, more than half of the rise forecast in the world's population in the coming decades will be concentrated in eight countries. Take a wild guess, the eight countries. Uh, surprisingly, uh, they're not all in Africa. Three of them, well obviously, uh, we have India. Uh, which will overtake China, but of course India has, what, one-fourth the area uh, of China? They never talk about that, that the population density in India is already a hell of a lot more than in China. Uh, so, of course, we have India, and it doesn't, uh, it is no surprise that next to India you see Pakistan, making the list in uh, the Philippines. So in Asia, we have India, Pakistan, and the Philippines. And in Africa, we have Egypt, which I guess is not sub-Saharan Africa. Egypt, Ethiopia. I've never known if Eth is Ethiopia uh, Sub-Saharan Africa or not. It's somewhere right, you know, so I don't know. <coughs> All right. Egypt, Ethiopia, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Nigeria, and Tanzania. Showing up and bringing up the rear of the list. Tanzania. You know, they're saying that Nigeria is going to pass the U.S. Uh, sometime over the next few decades that uh, going to be more people in Nigeria. So anyway, while, uh, while Antonio Guterres is, and Elon Musk and I'm sure Alex Jones and uh, and all the rest of the NATO the the NATO Na the NATO Nazis celebrating the fact that we have hit a new milestone with eight billion people. Let's go over and look at another uh, dire uh, UN report. Two point three billion people were severely or moderately hungry last year, uh, you know, in 2021. So uh, this is over 25% of the planet before uh, all, all of this crap uh, in the Ukraine even started. Over 25% of people on this planet, according to the UN, were moderately or severely hungry last year. And of course, uh, that is going through the roof this year. Um, take it away, United Nations. We're not going to hear from, uh, I, I see Antonio did not weigh in on this story. The spike in food, fuel, and fertilizer prices, the three Fs, food, fuel, and fertilizer, sparked by the war in Ukraine is threatening to push countries around the world into famine, bringing, quote, global destabilization, 
starvation and mass migration on an unprecedented scale, said uh, David Beasley, uh, head of the UN's World Food Program, uh, in their latest stark, dire report that uh, e even before the war, that over 25% uh, of this planet did not have enough to eat as so we just keep and of course it's the countries who already have the highest food uh, security issues that are piling on the most children uh, which is why supposedly it is Vladimir Putin's fault that all of these millions and millions and millions of uh, kids starving to death. Uh, it's his fault. It has nothing to do with their parents' decision to bring uh, more kids uh, onto this planet. I wonder if Elon Musk, is Elon Musk gonna, is he gonna feed these 2.3 billion uh, starving people if he thinks that uh, w w the biggest problem on this planet is there's too few people why didn't Elon pick up the tab uh, Beasley said the UN's latest analysis shows that quote a record 345 million acutely hungry people are marching toward the brink of starvation, close quote. This is a 25% increase from the 276 million just six months ago. In six months, we have gone, according, if you, by the UN's metrics, 276 million at 345 million. Uh, you know, before Russia and Ukraine started this crap on February 21st, okay, and for reference, in early 2020, before the beginning of the corona panic, the UN's official number stood at 135 million. So, uh... From early 2020 to early 2022, uh, the number of hungry people went from 135 to 276 million, so more than doubled. And then in the last six months, uh, has gone up another 25% from that. Uh, Quoting uh, this dude Beasley, quote, There is a real danger it will climb even higher in the months ahead. No shit. Even more worrying is that when this group is broken down, a staggering 50 million people in 45 countries are just one step away from famine. Close quote. Uh, Beasley spoke at the high-level UN meeting for the release of the latest report on global hunger by the World Food Program and four other UN agencies that paints a grim picture. This is a grim picture. This is not a dire. This is grim. Okay, the climate change. See, the climate change is dire. Starving to death is grim. The report, titled The State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World, says world hunger rose in 2021. Wow, do you think so? With around 2.3 billion people facing moderate or severe difficulty obtaining enough to eat, the number facing severe food insecurity increased to about 924 million. The prevalence 
of what they officially define as undernourishment when food consumption is insufficient to maintain an active and healthy life is used to measure hunger and it continued to rise in 2021. The report estimates that between 702 million and 828 million people faced hunger last year. Uh, Beasley said uh, that the impact of the conflict in Ukraine, the breadbasket of the world, on global food availability and food security, quote, means the number of chronically hungry people in the world is likely already much higher than 828 million, close quote. Uh, before the war, Ukraine and Russia together accounted for almost a third of the world's wheat and barley exports and half of its sunflower oil. Russia and its ally Belarus, meanwhile, are the world's number two and three producers of potash, a key ingredient of fertilizer. Uh, Beasley urged substantial new funding for humanitarian groups to deal with, quote, the skyrocketing levels of hunger. There you go. Keep throwing more and more money into these food, uh, you, you know, as more and more kids starve to death. Uh, just keep throwing more and more money at these food aid programs to uh, pull food, uh, you know, out of your hat uh, like a magic rabbit send to these starving kids uh, so their parents can have more starving children. Uh, there you go. Gee, where have we heard this before? Can you say donor fatigue? Yes, throw more money at it. Yes, blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, moving on. Okay. Get through all of this uh, Ukraine blame. Yeah, it's, uh, again, it's, it's all Vladimir Putin's fault. There would not be a single starving child in Africa if it wasn't for Vladimir Putin. That's the, that's the takeaway from here. <clears throat> Issued by the World Food Program, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, the UN Children's Fund, the World Health Organization, and the International Fund for Agricultural Development, the report says the 2021 statistics make clear, quote, the world is moving backwards in its efforts to end hunger, food insecurity, and malnutrition in all its forms. Close quote. Uh, there we go. The heads of the five agencies say in the report that in addition to the disruption to supply chains from the war in Ukraine that are driving up food prices, more frequent and extreme climate events are also causing food supply problems, especially in low-income countries. Uh, you know, we're all waiting for the O word. Obviously, you are not going to see, uh, you're not even going to see the word population, much less overpopulation. Nowhere, my guess is nowhere in uh, this report by these five agencies wondering why 2.3 billion people on this planet are starving. It, it, it is the word overpopulation going to be mentioned, much less saying if these 2.3 billion people had never been born and, the, and, and even if the population of the planet was 5.7 billion people, uh, at least there wouldn't be uh, that many hungry people running around. You aren't going to see that mentioned anywhere. 
uh, there, there was one way we could have a zero uh, starving kids on this planet is if they had never been born. And, and how many of these 2.3 billion kids uh, did their parents know damn well were 100% dependent on food imports? Uh, you will not believe this. The report says hunger kept rising last year in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Do you think so? And so last year, according to the report, hunger affected 278 million people in Africa, 425 million in Asia, and 56 million in Latin America. Uh, I'm assuming the reason that Asia had so many more than Africa is that the population of Asia is a hell of a lot bigger than Africa. Uh, it did not put it in a, I would like to see this in, in percentage terms. Uh, I guarantee you that uh, the percentage of Africans facing hunger is much bigger than the percentage of Asians facing hunger. Uh, these are the total numbers, but you know how the mainstream media is allergic to the percentage calculator. Uh, you, the UN Development Goals, I guess these Sustainable Development Goals, call for ending extreme poverty and having zero hunger by 2030, but the report says projections indicate that 8% of the world's population, meaning nearly 670 million people, will be facing hunger at the end of this decade. That is the same number of people as in 2015 when the goals were adopted. Yes. Looking at the situation of the very young, all right, this is the children, the, the little darlings who should never have been born. The report estimates 22% of children under the age of five, about 149 million today, had stunted, oh, this, I'm sorry, this was last year, that uh, 22% of children under age 5, otherwise known as 149 million children under the age of 5, had stunted growth and development, while 6.7% or 45 million suffered from wasting, wasting the deadliest form of malnutrition. Of course, at the other end of the scale, can you say here in the U.S., uh, the other end of the scale, 5% of youngsters under 5 or 39 million globally were overweight. There you go. So, uh, just so you know, there's two sides to this coin. So, I guess... This is the diversity we're celebrating uh, with the birth of all of these new little darlings. So I guess this is the diversity we are celebrating that Antonio Guterres is celebrating. All right, let's, what is the diversity? All right, children under the age of five with stunted growth, children under the age of five suffering from wasting disease, the deadliest form of malnutrition, and children under five who are overweight because they're fat little pigs because of their parents stuffing their fat little faces, you know, with ice cream cones the size of footballs. Yes. 
the <clears throat> five agency chiefs said the intensification of the triple crises, okay, the triple crises uh, leading to world hunger, what do you think are the triple crises uh, leading to world hunger? That would be climate, conflict, and the pandemic combined with, and the pandemic combined with growing inequalities. So that's kind of four things. Uh, climate, conflict, when they say the corona panic, they're talking about the economic response to the corona panic. Okay? They're not talking about uh, people, particularly children, starving to death because of the corona panic. They're talking about the crisis of the corona panic was the overreaction to the uh, to the corona panic that uh, got all of these children a hell of a lot more children have starved to death from the response to the corona panic than the corona panic itself by orders of magnitude it is there anybody who does not understand this what they're talking about when, when they're talking about uh, the pandemic in this case uh, so I guess all of this require quote bolder action to cope with future shocks yes Nowhere, obviously, are they going to mention the bold action of keeping your pecker in your pants and uh, at least uh, as we were celebrating here in the Doomosphere, getting a vasectomy. Well, you still can, but all of this talk about global food insecurity has made me and the little dog hungry, and I, I have to go throw some, one of my fellow Earthlings on the barbecue. Anyway, get out there and uh, enjoy your food security while you still can. Bye, guys.